Hello and welcome to the Tin Dog Podcast. This is the last of the three Torchwood doubles. In this episode we'll be talking about episode 212 and episode 213, known as the one with the flashbacks and the one with Jack's brother. I feel it's important that I dedicate entire shows to these two stories because this week marks the beginning of the new series of Doctor Who and I really don't want that to overshadow the entire end of season two. In saying that though, Everyone knows how excited I am about season 4 and I'm just not going to pretend about that. So I'll finish off today with a little taste of what's going to come. But first, Torchwood. Everyone likes a bit of backstory. Everyone wants to know the little fiddly bits. How Jack joined Torchwood, how it took him a hundred years to get to the top. That really is someone who's avoiding responsibility and a managerial respect quite, quite well. And let's face it, if you only get a job because everybody else is dead, does that really mean you're a good candidate? Of course I've skipped ahead. We open the story with some bombs. I'm not sure why the bombs were there. They actually were a plot device, which is nice. Everyone's standing inches away from these things as they blow up. Now we know Jack dies in the explosion, but he doesn't count because he comes back to life. Owen dies in the explosion, but he's already dead. And the others, well, it's just a bit of a surprise that everyone makes it out of this episode so well, especially considering what happens in the next one. And so, one by one, we go through everybody's flashbacks to how they got to where they are now. We start with Jack, and we get something that's been christened a Victorian Wood. Now, for some American listeners to the Tin Dog podcast, they won't get that extra level of comedy, because we have a comedian in England called Victoria Wood. Yeah, I didn't say it was a good joke, but it was indeed just a play on words. So, we have two lesbians, or bisexual people, or as they're known in the trade, members of Torchwood, who are helping rid the Empire of Phantasmagoria, which is of course a nice nod to the work of Mark Gatiss, and a host of other stories. It's nice to see early Torchwood, and for those of you who are into such things, I'm sure we'll have a little bit of slash fiction coming our way, whether we want it or not, in the very near future. As you can imagine, many of the forums have fixated on the aspects of the Victorian Torchwood over the other aspects of the story, and to be honest, I just don't blame them, because it's such a rich vein. That whole Jules Verne meets Doctor Who thing, it's just too tempting. But of course, that's not all we need to deal with. We need to look at the other members of Torchwood and how they joined. Zombie Boy and his amazing joining using Brain Worm Girlfriend scenario didn't exactly have me 100%. I know that the way his behaviour in Torchwood must be related to the fact that he's been hurt at some point in a relationship, so that does make sense, but it just didn't seem to ring as true as it could have. Not that I mind. The one that I took real exception to, of course, was Tosh's backstory. The fact that Tosh doesn't quite make it out of this series in one piece it does make that the backstory seems to have gone to some sort of waste, because Tosh was arrested by someone who looked very much like the person in the first episode of the new Doctor Who in the trailers, in kind of the same way, building something that looked as though she had it. It seemed as though there was a connection, which of course there wasn't, or doesn't seem to be yet. But more importantly, she's arrested by Unit, and Unit seems not to be the same Unit that we all remember from our classic days of John Pertwee. Unit is considerably more paramilitary. This is a Unit post 9-11. Yes, I know everyone in England would say the 11th of September, because in England, of course, we do in dates the other way around, and 9-11 is really the 9th of October, but the 9th of November, but that's just being picky about the way we do dates. This is a, a unit for a post-terrorist world, a scarier unit, and not so much in our United Nations anymore, but of course we'll come to that when we come to unit in about five weeks' time. To me, her whole section felt very much like the V for Vendetta scenes, of that film and, of course, comic that I love so much. Dark, brooding, and like Viva Vendetta, she is rescued by someone in a cloak, or a cape, or a long coat, and released into a new world. But, of course, she is still a prisoner. She's a prisoner of Torchwood, a prisoner that'll eventually get her killed. This leaves Yanto. Yanto's the one I always had the most issues with, the way he joined Torchwood. I know he was a member of Torchwood 1, and had his girlfriend that he rescued and brought her secretly, underground. We, we covered this in series one. But here we're dealing with a different Yanto, a Yanto who's a lot more fond of Jack, 
those 51st century hormones playing havoc with almost everyone? Or was it pheromones? Oh, I'll let you go. But a backstory mainly consisting of the origin of the pterodactyl, which I still would have preferred it if you had been left over from Operation Golden Age, another John Pertwee story, but that's just the classic Doctor Who fan in me trying to draw lines where there were none. And so everyone ends up being a member of Torchwood, and it's all very nice. There were some missed opportunities, things like not mentioning rift activity in San Francisco on Millennium Eve. Little moments that would have added just a nice extra level of touch, but then again, who's paying that much attention? Everyone survives, everyone stumbles from the wreckage, and then there's a call on Jack's wrist phone, and it's Spike, dressed as adamant, saying, hey, I've found your story arc for you, and I'm bringing him to meet you, or something along those lines. I'm now going to talk about the last episode of this season of Torchwood. Wasn't it good? Of course it had some flaws. I wasn't completely sold on why Grey was behaving the way he was. To be honest, I didn't actually quite follow why Grey was behaving the way he was. I know Torch would like to make a big thing of the whole alien post-traumatic stress disorder, but really, some people can just walk away from such things. It is the way that the minds are constructed. Not to make light of such things, but in a tortured world versus the real world, oh, it doesn't matter. I've rambled again and I've said absolutely nothing. I'm just not sold on the way that Grey is. His character didn't seem as developed as it could have been and his motivation seemed spurious at best. I don't know why he blew things up around Cardiff. I don't know why he was trying to destroy that particular place. Is it because Jack had created a new family without him? It did raise far, far too many questions. The thing about Jack crossing his own timeline and getting buried, fair enough, but I'm sure that you could dig your way out of that much earth, given 2,000 years. Unless, of course, Jack did actually manage to do that, had a very nice time for several hundred years, realised what would happen, and then about a week before Torchwood turned up, he dug himself back in. That will help leave people's nightmares about being buried alive, and still keep continuity going. But that's neither here nor there. And so, the season ends with Zombie Boy giving up his life, possibly dying in a radioactive shower, or indeed, as the Confidential said, crawling into the sewers and becoming King of the Weevils. Yeah, that could happen, might not, I just don't know on that one. But Tosh is dead. And I know she left a message, but several other characters in sci-fi have done so. It's not just Doyle from Angel. Um, Tasha Yar, lots of people, um, Wesley Crusher's dad, have left messages for other characters to say goodbye properly. I was kind of glad that she didn't build an artificial version of herself and leave herself to run the hub, killing two characters off in one episode. That was a little bit overkill, and it came as a bit of a surprise. It was very well executed. The acting was of the highest standard. Torchwood has indeed grown up. It's become the character. It's well on its way to becoming the show we thought it might be, or at least a variant on that theme. I don't know if there's going to be a third season of Torchwood. Probably there'll be an announcement at the end of the new season of Doctor Who. Probably there'll be an announcement at the new. Probably there'll be an announcement at the end of the new season of Doctor Who, because you never know which characters are going to be where. And on that, I'll leave you, and I'll speak to you very soon about partners in crime. Be seeing you. Come with me. Thrillers in the chase, never in the capture. There's no way to run. Is the spark of life. I just want a mate. You're not mating with me, sunshine. Being with you, I can't tell what's right and what's wrong anymore. It's better that way. I do not understand, miss. Why'd you say miss? Do I look single? Why, yes! I demand you tell me who you are. Fire entertaining evening you have been listening to the tin dog podcast doctor who and its associated shows are all trademark of the bbc no infringement is intended contact us at tin hyphen dog at hotmail.co.uk